are in the Zoom meeting now. There are one participant in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Why don't we just join you in the Zoom here and then present that window up there? Um, just because when you do that, then the audio goes through your computer and everyone has to sit in your computer, which is fine. You turn up loud enough, it's probably okay. Yeah, but also the video. So last time we had six people. You know, we're, we're still the video up there. But I mean, if you want to be inside the video, then yeah, we don't get that camera. Yeah. But uh, how do you get to hang out? You can actually get into remote uh, video input by a hangout. So. Okay. Yeah, you go present. I'm sure that's what you Okay. Yeah, you can stop Exit. You can. Hello? Hello. How's it going? Hi. Uh, let's see.
I guess we can wait two minutes to see if other people come. Do we have an agenda for today, or are we only going to offer agenda items once? Um, I, I think we can probably get started. I, I don't. I don't have any agenda uh, that I can think of. So I, I was just going to see if anyone had anything that they wanted to discuss. Let's think about once. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, yeah. Well, probably not, not worth forcing it if no one has anything. Um, I guess we could wait another one or two minutes to see if anyone pops on, but I'm, I'm guessing not. Maybe we can have a meta conversation about how to actually create these agendas and like how to line stuff up meetings. I mean, is it just throw stuff onto the agenda? Do we want to try to line up? speakers sort of like interesting sort of talk talk kind of things going on yeah I, I mean i i think most of the time people use these calls for uh you know for people in the in the general community to hop on and and ask questions so i guess part of it is maybe that we haven't done enough to actually publicize that these meetings take place so i i guess i could because we could send reminders you know um couple of days before uh, with the agenda doc to see if people want, want to add something. It, 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 I mean, it does seem in general, like most people are comfortable with the, with the mailing lists and with, and with PRs and with GitHub and stuff like that, which is honestly better for me too. So I don't, I don't know that I personally care that much if like no one hops on and asks a bunch of questions. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm also totally happy to answer them. Yeah. One thing that I actually sort of realized today would be useful would be to have a more public notion of what the Envoy roadmap is. Like we tag things for, you know, the next release and that's the thing that's, that's, uh, you do pretty conscientiously, but I feel that it's unclear to some people when certain features will arrive in particular, I think we put into the API, but not actually implemented SDS being the <coughs> example from today. Um, do we have a roadmap? Uh, no. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, I, I agree. I, I think that would be great. It's not super clear to me how to build a roadmap when, yeah, I mean, it, like, that's, that's, that's the problem with this type of work, you know, it, it's, 
I can, I, I, I do try to pretty aggressively go through and prune what's, what's in the next milestone, at least with what I think people are working on. But I mean, given that, at least for me, you, you know, I mean, I, I, I do control some resources here, but, but they're only a fraction of what is, what is applied. And then, you know, I don't have any control over what anyone else works on. So it's, 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 it's really hard to come up, I feel like, with the roadmap that's, that, that's accurate. Yeah, I mean, to the extent that people have committed to building certain things in certain time frames, that still may be possible. Like, you know, if someone comes on and says, well, I'll do SDS, but not today, but I'll make sure that happens before the end of Q1 or something like that, that would be, you know. But I also feel that, like, on an issue by issue basis, like, if someone is like, oh, I really need SDS, then they generally ask on OPR and we yeah. just the other the other problem too is and this is just my personal experience is i i don't feel that in general and this is not an envoy problem this is an industry problem that people are very good at estimating of when things will actually arrive so i mean saying that something is going to happen in q1 in my opinion is almost meaningless <laughs> so it's i mean like it might happen but it also might okay, let me give you example where this has been useful to me for example looking at basil um they made clear that on that 1.0 um, before they come 1.0, they're going to have C++ code coverage, I think, that at least unless they slip off badly on that. And that the useful thing to know is I, I'm not going to expect it anytime soon, but I should expect it by the time we hit that sort of mature milestone of 1.0. Um, you know, something like SDS today, you could say, well, <coughs> maybe it'll only arrive in an Envoy 5.0, you know. Yeah. The only, the only pushback that I would give to that, and, and this is my personal opinion, so you can take it with a, with a grain of salt, is I feel that there are basically two types of open source. There's corporate driven open source, and then there's basically community driven open source. And even though Envoy has a ton of money being thrown into it, I would actually put it in the community driven open source model. Like there's not a corporate backer. Basil is corporate open source and and in the sense that it's being driven by by google primarily um and there's plenty of other examples like that so the only the only the only reason that i bring that up is that i feel like in corporate open source like versions have much more meaning like people are saying you know it's like we're going to have a 1.0 and then it's going to do this and it's going to be a product or something like that and I, I don't know. I just don't. I just don't feel that we're that we're in that situation. That's yeah. that's. Like you're like, oh, I plan on doing this in IO cares, but someone who is depending on Envoy shouldn't care that we pulled off for an internal. Yeah, project. I mean, like, it, it, it's it's not written in blood anyway. Whatever we. No, so I'm I'm not really pushing back in the sense that like I think having a roadmap is great. Part of the problem, and this is something that I that I struggle with, is. GitHub is not great for road mapping, right? I mean, it's like you have a, I mean, it is kind of like you have milestones, but it's, it's, it's very hard to have a clear thing of what's going on. Um, you know, yeah. if, if there's- the up down follow is the best you can do. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, like Istio has a roadmap, I believe. They have a pretty clear idea of what's going to go into the next few versions. I think Istio is corporate open source. So I, I, I mean, I, I just like it, it's, Istio has program managers, Istio has like product managers, right? I mean, I, I just like, we don't have those resources. So I, I'm not saying that this is not a good idea. Like we can have a doc and I would be more than happy to have a place where, um, you know, maybe it's Google doc, maybe it's a spreadsheet. <clears throat> we, we can talk about what makes sense. Um, and, and for high level features, we can drag and drop them into, you know, different releases, depending on, you know, if we assume that releases are, are every three months and if people find that interesting, that's totally fine. Like that sounds great to me. I'm just worried that people are going to look at that and then it's not going to get implemented. And then people are going to be like, what? Well, you said it was on the roadmap, so I, I I don't know. It just it just feels like it feels like it might it feels like it's useful, but it also might come back to bite us. That's all. Fair enough. I, no, no, no. Well, I, I I mean, but but like I'm I'm for it. I, I mean, do do you think that a doc or spreadsheet w would be useful? Like, is that something that we should try? Yeah, I mean, I guess you know. Just, again, just think with it within my API hat on. 
we, 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 a lot of things have gone into the APIs and then been tagged, not implemented high grades or draft status. And then it's unclear really when they're actually going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that, that's, I mean, in terms of the actual docs that people see, we do a good job of hiding that stuff, which isn't really, you know, firmly. Uh, but how much of that is sure stuff that. that we didn't just add? I mean, we could publish our timelines before. <laughs> I thought most of the things we added beyond the existing Envoy API were feature things that we plan on doing for. There are a lot of things that are being added by other folks. Yeah, I mean, there's we've. In, in the beginning of the protos, I, I think it was a little, I don't want to say out of control, but people were just adding things that we might one day want to implement. I, I think we've actually done a pretty good job at this point of either telling people, like, you can add it when you're going to implement it, so don't, don't add it. Um, and we've got the not implemented high tag now, so it actually is a lot more clear when, when, when things are not implemented. There are... I. As far as I know, and I could be wrong, there is nothing in the public docs now that is not hidden, um, that is not implemented. And you know, if that's the case, I would I would love to know so that we can hide it. Um, so I, you know, I I tend to agree that like we could, but but here's the problem is that you know if we go and we make a spreadsheet, like let's say let's say we do a spreadsheet that that seems like the most cheap way of doing a roadmap and let's say that we arbitrarily say that releases are every three months we could go to the not implemented high things and say you, you know it's going to get implemented in version 1.x um but then when no, no one does that then we have to go through and, and like like okay now it's in 1.x plus one or something like that. yeah i think it's a simple beginning is that is it scheduled for the next release or is this going to happen Sometime in the indeterminate future is uh, the, the issue. Okay. That to some extent, right now with the missing issue tagging. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's less yeah. I, oh, so so okay. I mean, one one way of doing it might be that it might be scalable. Is how about this? Um, this, this this sounds like potentially a good idea. What if when someone adds something to Proto and they put a not implemented hide in? What if we make them put a GitHub issue ID? In there, so 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 basically everything that is not implemented must have an issue that's tracking it, yeah, so that when people are looking through the protos, they can just see like it's either in a milestone, it's not in a milestone, it's marked help wanted. Um, I think that's a good compromise. That that sounds like a good idea, and then we could actually search the protos for for GitHub issues um, and like see if anything got you know forgot to get updated or or, or forgot to get documented. But also, um, like pushing back on adding things to the API unless they are being implemented. Like if yes, for yes. Right. So, so do we think that maybe that that might be a good idea to to make people add a GitHub issue to, to the not implemented docs? Yep. Solved. Okay. So uh, let's. Initial initial we actually use both spreadsheets and GitHub issues. And we notice that uh, documents and spreadsheets tend to be quickly out of date. Yeah. So what we've done lately is uh, for roadmap, uh, big roadmap items, we open an issue and we mark it as epic. So this is a Zen Hub thing. You mark an issue and app as an epic, and then you can add multiple sub issues to it or sub tasks. And the way sometimes we use the milestone or releases, and we just move the the milestone when the when the particular feature was not being implemented in the current release, we were just like tag it to the nebulous feature or something. And the advantage is that we had people like um, sort of thumbs up on certain issues to see, I really want this feature or commenting or adding use cases. So there is a benefit in having this in GitHub. How do you like Zenhub? Is that, is that working out for you? Is that something that we should look into? I, I don't, we, uh, it actually asks for your GitHub ID and I don't know if password, it can read your GitHub history, but we've been using it. So it's a bit tricky. I don't want to recommend it in particular. Okay. But, yeah, but what I do want to recommend is having, um, like tracking the features in GitHub so people can comment and add to them. Sometimes it's, they are hard to find in a spreadsheet, you know? Yeah, I mean that's that's my that's my feeling also, which is why I've pushed back before on, on like spreadsheets or docs. So 
I, I think we can be better about going through and, and doing milestones. And historically, you know, that's just something that I've done because I'm kind of OCD and I, I like things to be organized. Um, so that's something that, you know, we can spread around more if other passionate OCD people like to keep things clean. Um, if that is you, you can talk to me and we can put up that work. I've got my own internal spreadsheets, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, I, I guess I, I do like the idea, so maybe we should put it in the uh, data plane API um, style guide that basically when you mark something not implemented, it, it must have an associated issue. Does yeah, I mean, for, for about <coughs> 10 minutes of hacking on protodoc, you could also enforce that as the, uh, by the syntax there, the not implemented tag. I guess that's true, actually. We could just make it also have a, have a uh, URL. Yeah. Well, you had the idea, so not it. I'll do it in my... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Yeah, that, that sounds great. I mean, I think, I think there's, a, there's a meta conversation here kind of about, about releases. And I get asked this quite a bit by people. So historically for, for Envoy, you know, most people I, I think that are running Envoy are kind of stereotypical larger internet companies that tend to be used to doing continuous deployment roughly. So people are mostly running master. Um, a lot of people are not comfortable with that. So I, I get a lot of questions around, you know, when is this going to be in a numbered release or, you know, if, if bugs are found, are you going to do dot releases? And so far, mostly because we just don't have resources and, and at Lyft, we don't care at Google. I doubt you care. I mean, it's like most, most larger companies don't care. Um, we all tend to run master. There, there hasn't been resources for, you know, like maintaining dot releases and like doing, doing those types of releases. So, there's a larger long-term question as to whether, you know, we need to do kind of more official release cadences where we do like release candidates. And then, you know, if a bug is of sufficient badness, we would do a dot release or something like that. And it's not that we couldn't do that today. It's just that, you know, that just requires yet more resources, which, which we don't have. So um, I'm just curious if, if anyone has any thoughts on that or, um, you know, if that's something that we want to think about in, in the future. Well, whatever the distributions, like various folks from like Red Hat and other distributions involved with the Envoy community may make this kind of thing. Like, can we take their best practices and have them drive this? Yeah, I mean, I think we could. I, well, I, I think so. I think there's two things. I, I think the best practices are pretty well known. It's more of a resourcing problem, just in, in, in the sense that, um, you, you know, I, I think we can build a policy like we could actually go through and we could do release candidate drops for some period of time and ask people to test and then we can do dot releases if there's bugs found. We but file an open issue for this. And again, let, let the community debate and decide. I yeah, yeah, no, I, I think there is an I think there is an issue actually for doing for doing like dot releases and stuff like that. But I can I can look and then track it. So I, I just want to throw it out there. I don't think it's something that we have to decide right now. But that that is a um, that is a thing I've heard is that people are not necessarily comfortable running master and, and they want more official releases. But that's just not something that I personally have resources for. I, I, I think that over this year, uh, just with the increasing usage, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Envoy starts getting, a, just like separate from Istio, if Envoy starts getting packaged by the, by the distro vendors. Um, and, and that might be a forcing function, just, just in the sense that, you know, if it's being provided as part of Fedora, or Ubuntu or something like that, you know, they, they will likely force the, the, the versioning thing. There is significant amount of work in supporting multiple versions, especially when it comes to test infrastructure and all the rest. So um, even in Istio, we, we have like a monthly release now, we switch for a quarterly release to a monthly 
but we do not plan to support all the intermediate versions, right? Because uh, if it keeps like forking and diverging, there, 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 is a, there is a toll on the team. So we're going to support mostly like the latest or the two previous released versions, not everything. Right. And this also like it, it becomes a, an issue with who's using the version. Right. And how critical is the bug that needs to be double committed in a particular version. So it's a whole machinery that uh, becomes necessary when you move from using the master to having like supporting different versions. Don't take it lightly. It's just, you know, an advice. Yeah, I, well, I mean, you're you're kind of listing out why I, why I don't want to do versions at all, but um, but yeah, it, it's something that I think we'll just have to track. And it, it might be that if people want want versions, someone from the community might have to actually step up and, and basically do that work. We added a security policy not that long ago, right, which described what would happen if we found a serious, you know, flaw in Envoy, and it does describe going back and doing point releases, right. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I guess the, the difference is that, you know, like when we, when we ship 1.5, we found that there was a, but so this is actually a, a great example. We found that there was a few bugs in terms of we weren't, you know, we weren't parsing the, the proto schema correctly, or there was a few cases of configs that basically weren't being cached. And I, I think in historical kind of software practices, someone that was doing a shrink wrap software would have done a 1.5.1 basically with those couple of fixes and 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 we didn't because we don't have the resources to to do that so i bring that up just because i think there's there's a difference between like a like a severe security bug which i do think that we'd have to go back and basically patch um but you know and, and kind of like a random bug where, where you can just say well it's been fixed in master is it, is it also reasonable, again, if we, if we end up with a couple big users who really want release branches to ask them to contribute resources to do that? Yes. Yeah. I, I, think that's, I think that's totally reasonable. And I, I think that's in general the stance that I've taken so far, which is, you know, we, we are community driven, like in, in as much as I would love to provide everything, you, you know, that people want, we're, we're not running a business. So it's like, can't really justify that. Um, so I think if people want these things, I think someone's going to have to step up. And as was said before, doing, doing release management, like if you look at what, you know, gRPC and what like protobuf does just, just as an example of like cutting RCs and like those kinds of things, it's a very non, non-trivial cost. So we would need someone to step up like an actual release manager to, to go and do that. Cool. Anyone have anything else? <clears throat> All right. So I, I, I think the concrete actions are going to be, so we'll, we'll do something um, in uh, data plane API where features are not implemented. We'll force people to put in a GitHub issue for tracking. I think that's great. Um, I will set up some type of calendar reminder so that maybe like the Friday before the community meeting, we send out a reminder email and ask people to reply back with things that they might want to put on, on the agenda, just so that we make sure that people are, you know, if there's things that people want to talk about to kind of remind them about it. And we, when we dock up um, whatever we're going to call the maintainer rotation, let's move it to the maintainer rotation right away. Sorry, what's that? Once we have a maintainer rotation, let's make that part of the maintainer rotation. Yes, of course. Yeah. And that's something that we can talk about offline. So hold on. I see uh, Chris in chat. Uh, Chris is saying that uh, we can ask people to do presentations or demos. So yeah, I, I agree. I think that would be fantastic. So maybe seeing if people in the community want to want to give little talks or, or, or demo would be great. Or maybe even if they have something that they would like to hear talked about. And then we can find someone who can figure out a, a you know short demo or presentation or whatever. Sure. Yep. 
Sounds great. Yeah, I, I think there are some topics that are that that generally confuse people. So maybe if we can get a list of of those, or you know, that's that's actually um, that's another possible thing is we could go through and actually make a list of kind of the most frequently asked questions or something like that, um, and then maybe you know sign someone up to do like a like a ten minute talk on that or something. Cool. All right. Well, have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.